Well, hello and welcome to the Informed Traveler Podcast, a weekly travel podcast where our goal is to help you become a more informed traveler. And I'm your host, Randy Sharman. On this week's podcast, we're going to talk about using Wi-Fi while you're traveling. So in a few seconds, travel expert Onanta Forbes will join me to discuss some of the options available. Plus, travel photographer and author Autumn Carolyn is going to join us to share her latest book, Traveling in Wonder, A Travel Photographer's Tale of Wonderlust. Might be a good Christmas gift idea. And Ken Stewart from Crowfoot Travel Solutions will be along with a few destination ideas and travel deals with our weekly roundup. But first, let's kick things off chatting with travel expert Onanta Forbes, who joins us each week to discuss some of the travel news and travel trends. You can follow her adventures on Instagram, Facebook, and X at Onanta Forbes. Onantaforbes.com is her website. Hi, Onanta. Hi, Randy. How's your week going? Going very well. We're going to talk about uh, using Wi-Fi while traveling. And there's, uh, there's a number of ways of doing that. Uh, obviously, we can start with the, the, the obvious one is using public Wi-Fi or using the Wi-Fi at your hotel, which is the simplest, easiest, but it's not the safest. No, you're right, because you, you, you uh, put yourself a little bit uh, in a vulnerable state because it, um, it is a public domain at that, at, that, um, at that framework. But, yeah, there's different ways you can um, utilize Wi-Fi, um, definitely. Um, one of the things I learned when I was working remotely earlier this uh, year, and it does depend on your service to pr- provider, if you sign up for Wi-Fi calling and you're in a true Wi-Fi environment. I was able to make calls just like I was if I was at home in Canada. So um, calls locally while I was in Mexico, but also calls um, throughout the world um, to uh, suppliers, to clients. Um, so that, and it was, there was no cost to it. So um, that was a nice bonus for me um, working a, a abroad, but also when I am traveling abroad, just on a leisure basis, say you have to contact a, um, a vendor that you use at home and you have to deal with the situation. It was, it's a, it was a really easy t- uh, tool. Another one I, I, um, I did was I bought a local SIM card and this one, I took out my, my, local my sim card that i had at home replaced it with the new one and that allowed me to utilize the internet and local texts and calling and um that was a a great benefit because technically you you know if you work or you live remotely like our snowbirds do that's a, a nice feature to have so that you are um locked in to different um you know local communication with uh, vendors or um, different suppliers that you're working with at when you are away from home. A lot of people in Mexico use WhatsApp and you can call on WhatsApp and you can um, do video um, calls as well as as like uh, phone calls. So there's there's also those entities like Facebook has that feature as well. Um, and you can always look at, you know, utilizing the the data that you have or the roaming data that you have with your international plans with your cell phone carriers again there's so much out there that you do have to do your homework and um people like me like i don't know like you don't know what you don't know so so you do really have to uh talk to people that maybe have have experiences and have utilized different um, um avenues to to, to be able to, you know, reduce your data bills, really. Um, I've heard people purchase a Wi-Fi USB dongle, and that's where you, it's a small device that you insert to your computer's USB port and has Wi-Fi capabilities um, without having to rely on hotspots or SIM cards. And they're easily portable as well as offer security and connectivity. So, yeah, lots of things to consider. Um, one thing that just kind of came out the last couple of weeks is like airlines such as um, uh, WestJet, they're going to be offering free Wi-Fi to WestJet reward um, members on all on all their flights, and they mm-hmm. and they have a partnership with um, SpaceX Starlink. And I've heard of Starlink um, before, where they use uh, Starlink is on um, cruises. So if you purchase the Wi-Fi or it's part of your package plan. Um, Starlink is actually pretty um, good. It was quick. 
I've used it on my recent um, group travel with Holland America, and I was able to do Wi-Fi calling. Um, you know, like we do our podcasts on a certain app, and we were able to do it that way. So it's pretty amazing. But one thing that a lot of suppliers, um, hotels, and airlines are um, kind of putting in addition to getting all these free great services, you have to be a member of their rewards program. Mm -hmm. So with WestJet, you have to have that member's rewards um, number on your booking so that you can take advantage of it. Um, Marriott, um, if you are, or IHG, if you are with one of their members, they give you free basic uh, Wi-Fi in their membership. And that really does, create ease and convenience as well as you know lessen your costs of trying to log on to different because everybody is linked in right to everything yeah. these days and exactly. it's amazing how many people like to stream whether at home or at, at or on holidays so like looking at movies or video <laughs> um games and such um or exactly. even conducting business operations so it is important um to, to know what's out there so that you can take advantage of what's right for you. Um, you mentioned it before is like, yeah, you know, being an accommodation that offers it. And that also includes like, there's a lot of um, Airbnbs or um, mm-hmm. home away that, that that's part of their offer as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know if there's a lot of these out there, but you know, spending time in internet cafes, um, there's a lot of, you know, Starbucks is probably very popular for going there to get their free Wi-Fi. And, you know, you, you're a past cruise um, through. I bet you you knew in every port where the free Wi-Fi was. Oh, for sure. Yes. And we always, we got to ask that all the time, but that was a long time ago. So uh, there's a lot to unpack of what you were talking about there. Uh, First, yeah, it depends on what you're going to use your uh, Wi-Fi for. If it's for streaming and that kind of stuff, then yeah. And and I don't want to get confused with data versus Wi-Fi. Like there's data packages that you can get. There's technology that you can get uh, that have, that offers data. So when you're away from Wi-Fi, and then there's using the Wi-Fi, which is what I try to do is most often. So I'm not using data because right. you're right. It's very expensive. And the technology has changed as far as cruise ships go. Uh, I I can recall that the, the Wi-Fi on board used to be very spotty. And, uh, you know, sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't. But now I think the technology has changed. It's quite, uh, quite reliable now. And... Yeah, you don't want to be using your data if that's all you're going to do. Uh, getting back to your point of what are you going to use it for? If all you're going to do is, is stream videos and watch movies, then uh, yeah, I would be avoiding the data altogether and turning your data off and finding a Wi-Fi. And now mm-hmm. there's, there's there's even portable routers you can take with you. There's um, uh, portable uh, Wi-Fi devices that you can attach that uh, hook up. I don't know. I'm not a techie person, but mm-hmm. uh, they're available. So the technology really is amazing. So you really, to your point, uh, have to do your homework, especially if you're not uh, that uh, a techie like me. Yeah, well, or, or you have a five-year-old in your family that's traveling with you that could just quickly do it for you. This is but very you, true, yes. If, yes. You have, <laughs> if you have children, they could probably teach you, walk you through it quite easily. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and it is true. Like, And it, it is important because you do feel that, lens, that sense that you're missing out if you're not connected, um, especially in this day and age. So, it, and, and I think it's important to... Um, to have that feature available to you because so many of your travel details are shared with you as far as updates or maybe changes in your travel plan right, via text or maybe even email or they encourage you to use an app to um you know to have it linked into your travel arrangements as well so it's very few people that don't have phones, but you also have to be aware that the communication about your trip will be via a smart device or be via an app. So you do need to be able to access those features to be aware of um, what's going on on your trip. 
Mm-hmm. Well, and, and to the point about uh, security as well, I wouldn't be checking my bank account if I was on public Wi-Fi and, and those types of things. But if you're checking your email and, and maybe watching a cat video at a Starbucks or <laughs> whatever you want to do on your vacation, the funniest thing I always uh, think now is when you buy a pool and... I would bet 90% of the people sitting around the pool are staring at some device. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's amazing. Well, the bad guys are pretty smart, you know, that they can take advantage of others on the network and, and hack into different of your searches and such. So, yeah. And I I can't even imagine that their capability of, of what um, they can do. So be aware too of um, not only what, how to access, um, you know, your Wi-Fi or, or different means to communicate, but also be aware of um, like security and safety tips too. Cause I think mm-hmm. that's just as important as, you know, being able to access um, in different avenues. Absolutely. Uh, and I, yeah, the, the biggest takeaway I think here is, is do your homework depends on what you're going to use it for. And uh, talk to someone who's uh, in the business, knows it's a uh, kind of different device and can help you, of, uh, whether it's a portable Wi-Fi unit you want to use or a public Wi-Fi, if that's all you're going to use it for is is to check your email. And, and yes, you know, you're talking about the loyalty programs too, like Marriott and, uh, and all the other, each hotel has their own. Uh, mm-hmm. They're free to sign up. It doesn't cost anything to become a member. So sign up and then you get all the perks of, you know, the, the free Wi-Fi and the those types of things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, information is power, and that that goes to so many different aspects of our life. Sure does. Onanda Forbes is a travel expert. You can follow her adventures on Facebook, Instagram, and X at Onanda Forbes, and onandaforbes.com is her website. Thanks, Onanda. Thank you. Take care. Well, one of the great things about traveling is the people you meet and the experiences you enjoy. Well, one travel photographer and author, Autumn Carolyn, put her 30 years of travel together in a new book called Traveling in Wonder, a travel photographer's tale of wonderlust. And Autumn joins us now to share her story. Her website, where you can order the book, by the way, and find out more about it is autumncarolyn.com. Hi, Autumn. Hi. Uh, It looks like an exciting book. Tell me how it all came together. Sure. Um, Thank you so much for having me. I am very excited to be here. So I started my journey with travel when I was 22. I studied abroad in Canterbury, England, and I was an English major. And I had this goal. I've never been abroad before. So this was the first time I was going, and I was also living in England for the first time for three months. And I figured since England was in the middle of Europe, I wanted to see as many countries as I could during the short time that I had. So every weekend, I would fly to a new country and stay in that country from Friday to Monday. And then I would fly back in time for me to be at class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. (laughs) (laughs) And... I was able to accomplish the 13 countries in 13 weeks, and that kind of was the catalyst for everything. It just kind of was um, my beginning start of my love for travel. And yeah, so that's like the beginning portion of it. And this is also in my book. My book is divided up, um, and it's in chronological order. But it's divided up by four different sections, and it goes through four different um, careers that I have had in travel. And so that's the first section of the book. Nice. Well, it seems to me that you can only do that in Europe. (laughs) Visit that many countries and fly for much cheaper than you can in North America Mm -hmm. and all those things. So uh, I'm glad you took advantage of it. do you um do you enjoy photography more than storytelling or does it matter or does the photo still tell the story sometimes? Oh, that's a really good question. I don't think I've ever been asked that before. I <laughs> <laughs> So when I was 15, I we had this idea or in our high school, we had a selection of electives that we could take. And photography was one of those electives. 
And my dad had an old Nikon camera and it was a film camera, an N70, and it was in our basement. And I always wanted to be like my dad. And (laughs) I thought, okay, I'm going to use his camera and I'm going to go and try out this film course just because it was something new and something different that I'd Mm -hmm. never tried before. Mm -hmm. And I kind of fell in love with photography at that time. It got to a point that all of the friends that I had made in high school were all from that photography class because we would go and I'm from the outs, I'm from the suburbs of Chicago mm-hmm. and uh, the suburbs of Chicago have uh, a train system. That's the Metra and you can take the Metra into downtown Chicago, but it also connects to all over these different towns and it goes all the way up to Wisconsin into a few towns in Wisconsin as well. So we took this train and we would ask the train conductor to not tell us where our tickets were going to be going, but we would say, we want to be surprised. And can you just (laughs) surprise us and let us know where, you know, just say where we're going to be going off. And then we will just explore on our own without any type of um, map or anything. We'll just see what it's like on our own. And so we would do this every weekend uh, when I was like 16, And I thought it was so awesome at that time because, you know, I was with my friends, so I felt safe, but I could still have that feeling of travel Mm -hmm. and the feeling of like being outside of your comfort zone. And what I didn't realize at the time was that it was really um, helpful for me and it gave me the tools that I needed and that I didn't know that I would need when I was young to be able to use as I got older and as I started to work within travel and have like a love of travel. Nice. Well, and looking at your bio, uh, you've done a lot. Uh, not just traveling, but, uh, you know, travel uh, agent, uh, a flight attendant, which I think would be a book in itself, telling yeah. stories about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and even a, even a radio announcer for a bit, too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, when I graduated from studying abroad, then I had this idea that I was going to fly to Australia and live there and move there and work in Australia in Sydney. And so the year after I stopped studying abroad and I graduated college, I saved up uh, like $5,000 in three months. I worked four jobs consistently and I was able to buy my one-way ticket to Australia. What happened was that I had packed all of my belongings into boxes and I just had this gut feeling three days before my one-way ticket was about to go. And the gut feeling was telling me that I just shouldn't go to Australia. And I did not know why, because I was devastated. I had told all my friends and my family and my coworkers that I was going. And then how do I explain to all these people that, oh yeah, I'm not going because I have like this gut feeling that I shouldn't go. (laughs) Um, But I listened to it and the ticket was non-refundable. It was very expensive and it, I I let it go. And then 10 days after the flight uh, departed and I didn't take it, I got a call from a large airline company asking for a um, interview for me to become a flight attendant. And during this time I was thinking, I don't even remember applying to all these different positions. I just was in fix it mode because I was thinking, okay, what am I going to do now? Because I don't know what's happening, but I got the call and they interviewed me. They flew me down uh, to their main hub and I had to go through three months of intensive training, 12 hours a day, six days a week. And we learned how to fight fires in the cabin and uh, do CPR all of these things that you would never really realize could happen in a plane, but really you have to be in control of what's going on um, when you're up there and you have to be aware of all different types of situations. So I flew for uh, a few years. So what are the other stages now? You talk about four stages of, of, of your book. Yeah. Uh, what, what does your book highlight in the other stages? Then? Yeah, sure. So from that flight attendant, series. That's the second series of it. Mm -hmm. And for the third series, it talks about how 
I meet my husband and uh, we get married and we move to a different state. And I decide to quit being a flight attendant because the commute uh, was very difficult for me and I got injured on the job and things like that. And then I become a travel agent. And so I'm able to take all the different trips and experiences that I had used and then create trips for people using the info and the experience and um, just like the fun things that you learn when you're actually out and traveling Mm -hmm. and then create trips for other people, which was a really fun uh, job as well. Yeah. Um, so what do you hope people get from this book? It's not really, even on your uh, website, it mentions it's not really a travel guide. It's mm-hmm. more of an insp- inspiring thing, right? And just talking to you, uh, it's you're, you're quite an in- inspiration just by all the things that you've done. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, so the book is the last, I'm sorry, I'm going to finish my, I, cause I forgot to finish the last one, but the last one is just travel photographer series. And mm, okay. that's the one that just talks about what it's like now in my life as a photographer. Um, but for my book, it basically is uh, a mixture of stories and storytelling. It also has tips and trips uh, t- uh, tips and tricks about uh, ways that I was able to consolidate my items to be able to fit them on a flight when I was running out of space or ways to be able to find, you know, niche different restaurants and eateries that you normally wouldn't find on your own or navigating a map without having a GPS and learning how to connect to the Wi-Fi at all these different stores. So it's kind of a storytelling in a way, um, but it also is something where I feel like it could help people who are interested in going to those places or are just curious about what it's like to be a flight attendant and going through that training and then being out and experiencing that. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot. Do you have a favorite destination or someplace that you haven't been yet? Yes. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> my favorite destination is most definitely Norway. I have been back three times and it's one of the only countries that I've been back uh, multiple times because I just absolutely love it. It is beautiful. The fjords are magnificent. The food is great. And honestly, the people are very kind and they're very nice. Um, place I have not been to that I would love to go is Vietnam. I would also really love to go to Croatia. Oh, I, I hear it's, yeah, very, both places, very, very nice. I've never been to either, but, (laughs) um, so now I'm going to put you on the spot again. If you had (laughs) one tip, one piece of advice for, uh, our listeners, uh, what would that be? The piece and the tip of advice that I really love to give is if you are interested in travel, but you are afraid or you have anxiety and you're not sure how to even start, I always recommend for someone to start, even if it's just going to a new grocery store and trying a different way home from work, just changing up your surroundings and letting your senses be able to Take in what you're seeing, maybe trying a new food or going to a city or a town that is nearby that you can either drive or take a train to and acting like a tourist for that day in that place and just really making yourself feel more confident as you go to places alone. And then that way, as you build up uh, your confidence and being able to tackle traveling to places and navigating, then going abroad and and going to someplace on your own abroad, I feel like is just a really wonderful way to experience um, confidence in yourself, but also uh, to learn about other people's culture and to meet people um, from that culture and um establish relationships and friendships. And you talk a little bit about that in your, um, on your website about Mm -hmm. traveling and it opens up so many avenues of of learning about other cultures and other people. Uh, And I think that's important. I think people, uh, that's one of the great things about traveling that uh, people get from it, right? 
Yeah, I I think so. I think there's also, you know, some kind of really heartwarming feeling when, say, you are in a hostel and it's a bunch of people that you don't know and everyone is kind of trying to uh, explore a new town on their own. And you just kind of sit there and start talking with people and You know, we were just in uh, Slovakia in Bratislava um, and we had met a gentleman from Iran and we were sitting there and we were just talking about the wedding culture in all the places that we have been. And he had been to weddings that were in Denmark and also um, in, uh, I think it was in Germany. And he was talking about the difference, the differences between that wedding culture in India as well. And so it's just something that's like heartwarming about it, that everyone is all coming from different places in life. But when you're able to connect with them on a deeper level and experience something for the first time, it is just extremely special and something to really be cherished. Uh, anything you want to add? Um, I would love to add that uh, you are more than welcome to follow me on Instagram <laughs> <laughs> or on Facebook on my website. Uh, my Instagram is Autumn, A-U-T-U-M-N, Carolyn, C-A-R-O-L-Y-N-N, Photography. And that is also for my Facebook, my YouTube. Um, I have TikTok and all those fun things. Um, And also, I'm just very thankful to be on this podcast and to talk with you and to share a little bit about who I am and my book and my website and what I do. Uh, The book is called Traveling in Wonder, a travel photographer's tales of wonderlust. They can order it right on your website, actually, too, autumncarolyn.com. Calm. It was uh, real fun chatting with you, Autumn. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. I had a blast. This is the Informed Traveler podcast. I'm Randy Sharman. Just want to remind you of our website, theinformedtraveler.org. That's where you can find our contact page if you have any questions or comments about the podcast. You could also email me too with any questions you might have. My email address is randy at theinformedtraveler.org. And if you want to get up to date travel info through the week or just see a few amusing travel stories and links, you can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash informed traveler on Instagram at informed traveler or on X at informed traveler. So now, as always, I'd like to end the show with our weekly roundup and joining us to do that is Ken Stewart from Crowfoot Travel Solutions. Good day, sir. Hello, Randy. Hello, everyone. Uh, here we are, middle of the month already. And uh, I'm not going to say how many weeks, but Christmas is coming. <laughs> End of the year's coming. <laughs> I think it's, it's what like, is it, around six weeks? Less than that now. Oh, man. I yeah. tell you. It'll be here. You. Just when up. you think you're getting ahead. Just when you think you're getting ahead, it's like, oh, my God. I'm behind now again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lots of talk. Black Friday. Black Friday for everything. <laughs> yeah, you can hear cars. the ads. You can count the number. This is what people should do. You can count the number of ads on radio, television, any other form of media that start with the words Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I bet uh, you can count five or six in a row that say Black Friday, Black Friday, Black Friday. But I digress. Well, anyway. <laughs> everybody's got them and they start early and they do things different. And uh, again, so Black Friday is this month. A lot of suppliers have had early bird offers. So if you've seen one of those ads, or heard one of those ads, remember, <laughs> if it's related to travel, uh, any travel agent, uh, and if you've got a, one that you'd like to use, thank you so much. We'll have access to those offers. And uh, again, there's no difference in the pricing, anything like that. So, you know, we look after a lot of the details so that you don't have to at the beginning and going forward. And that way you can relax because it's all taken care of. So if you're going to be planning a trip, uh, it'd be worth your while to give us a call. We can have a short discussion and uh, see if those Black Friday sales are on there. And again, exactly. in the fine print, uh, again, it's subject to availability. So, again, you know, there are certain ones that uh, may not have any Black Friday sales. So I know a lot of people wait for this before they're going to book. But, uh, again, just a, a tip for you, uh, especially for the sun destinations and packages and things like that. Uh, if you're booking ahead of time, you're going to be able to get yourself locked in. And uh, uh, chances are that you're not going to really save anything by waiting for a Black Friday deal. Not that I don't like them, but... 
left, right. Well, yeah, so there's, so, there's so many mitigating factors. And like you say, uh, it, you know, the sale may be on one or two rooms at a hotel, for example, and they're gone. <laughs> and so now the next thing kicks in. And so it's best to have someone that's uh, got their thumb on the, the travel industry, though, so they can watch and, and keep track and, and answer all those questions for you. You betcha. You betcha. <laughs> Exotic Couture's, uh, as an example, you've probably seen some of their ads on uh, TV and wonder who these guys are, maybe. Uh, a great company, tours all around the world, uh, still expanding in certain destinations, uh, growing, growing, growing. Uh, a lot of their packages you can uh, put complete with airfare, and you actually get to choose the airfare. They don't choose it for you. Uh, that way you can select to get the best flights. Uh, along with those packages, they include your accommodations, and depending on where you're going in your budget, you have three styles to choose from to, to suit your needs, from classic, superior, and luxury. Uh, and when pricing these out, you'll often see that it's not very much to upgrade yourself to the superior and luxury categories, really. Uh, again, like I say, you go on a vacation to enjoy yourself and create memories. And again, so, so sometimes you need to treat yourself. It's well worth it. Excursions are all included and also includes a lot of free time in destinations, uh, or maybe you can add another excursion on from their uh, selection if one suits you. So you can, you know, really get into the uh, area that you're uh, uh, traveling to. So, and repeat clients <clears throat> also get uh, special pricing rewards to save on your next trip. And Exotica is finding that they're getting a lot of repeat clientele once uh, uh, people have taken advantage of, of one of their tours and, and find out exactly what it is that you're getting. So uh, right now on the Black Friday, save up to 70% off some tours. So that's <laughs> huge, <it> <laughs> huge Black Friday. That is and a good really, deal. Give me an example is. of some of the, uh, the tours Exotica runs, though. Ah, I mean, you could go to Peru and do Machu Picchu. Uh, we've got uh, tours over in Asia. They've got a ton in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, uh, some of them are in destination tours. So you'll, you know, stay in one city, like now maybe in Nice and then uh, do day tours to all the surrounding area. Uh, you can do back to back tours if uh, the time and, and money fits. Uh, and again, basically anywhere in the world that you want to go to pretty much they've got it, including North America. Nice. Emerald River Cruise has just announced their 2025, early 2026 offers for their Southeast Asia sailings in Vietnam and Cambodia. And uh, a couple of those tours are linking uh, uh, for Japan and Laos tours over and above the, the sailing. So uh, right now, enjoy round trip international airfare. Savings up to $2,400 per couple on itineraries from 13 to 24 days. And if you want to spend some more time, give our uh, Gary, Mr. Asia, a call. And he can help you put together some some pre and post and have just a fabulous vacation. Yeah, well, while you're you're going a long way, you might as well make it worth your while, right? You gotta you gotta do those. Take advantage of those things. Again, vacations are for treating yourself to something special. Exactly. Uh, free airfare and reduced fares for new Viking Ocean bookings for their Australia, New Zealand, South America, Panama Canal, Pacific Coast, Hawaii, Polynesian Islands, any of these and more that are deposited by the uh, November 30th. <clears throat> so we still got some time with that. And uh, uh, multiple, other, multiple other special offers on almost all that Viking has to offer on both the river and ocean sailings. So if you got time for a free gravitation, we can talk about where you want to go and just see what kind of sales we can get you. For sure. Because uh, they're really good and their pricing is really, really good too. For sure. Speaking of cruises, by the way, uh, Princess, I saw a note saying they have 2027 available now. 2027 is available or coming in the next few weeks, for sure. Yeah. yeah crazy, again, though, Cruise right? Line's <laughs> a long way out. A long <laughs> no, it's way crazy. Out. <laughs> no, and if you like to cruise, uh, Virgin Cruisers, adult only, so only 18 plus on board. No single supplement for solo travels. They have limited cabins on every sailing for that. Uh, luxury cruising without paying the price. Uh, and that means more value, not necessarily what you expect where feeling is not like pretentious on a luxury cruise, but getting dressed up may mean your uh, best Hawaiian shirt and khakis from your closet. Uh, they always throw in a couple of theme nights on the ship. If you want to participate, uh, they'll have maybe a PJ party or a Scarlet night where everybody's all dressed in red instead of the traditional white nights. Uh, over 20 restaurants on board with Mission Star chefs. Uh, food's available 24-7, no extra charges in any of the restaurants. So you go as much as you'd like, order as much as you like, throw the diet out for a week, and no buffets on the ship. So again, everything's a la carte, and uh, we call them sailors. So for sailors in Canada, 
save 50% and up to $300 US in free drinks. And trust me with their onboard drink pricing, that's a lot of drinks. So again, <laughs> consider Virgin. Again, great. We've had, I know Theonia in our office has traveled on them. Uh, we've sold them quite a few. I had a nephew who sold them and he said he would do it again in a heartbeat. They're just uh, really nice ships. Yeah. I've heard lots of good things about Virgin Cruises. So. Uh, Windstar uh, Cruises, we got both the regular sailing ships and they have some boutique yachts. Uh, and this one might be for you. I want you to be able to experience Tahiti. So along with their islands cruise, they're adding a four night pre-stay with three days in an overwater bungalow in Morea. Now I know it's not Bora Bora, mm. but I don't think the wife would complain if you took her to Morea. Yeah. <laughs> Just oh. And also starting this week, uh, they've got, uh, choose one of their three gate perks when you reserve your next Windstar Voyage. You could have uh, perk number one, which is an onboard credit of up to $1,000 per suite. And you can use that on shore excursions, beverage packages, spa treatments, and more. Or choose perk number two, a uh, night at a hotel before or after their cruise. And perk number three is a complimentary all-inclusive experience when you reserve a premium suite. And that has a value uh, that they say of up to $1,300 for two guests on a seven-day voyage. So some Ooh, great savings nice. there. So. Yeah. If Windstar has been on your travel radar, uh, let's use that free phone call and have a conversation. And again, see what mm -hmm. we can do for you. They do a good job too. Yep. And I know we talk about this a lot and it may get boring, but again, it's that time of year when more and more of us are doing beach vacation and flights to other destinations. I know I'm heading into Houston in a couple of weeks with my grandkids to uh, visit family down there for their American Thanksgiving. So whether you're traveling now or not, check your passports and other important items or documents you may need to use to travel. Make sure they're all valid. Uh, often your passport may need to be valid for a minimum of six months after your travel date for many of the countries or destinations, which I had a client recently, uh, you know, doing a river cruise, found out his passport was six days past, so he had to get a new one. Uh, I know my Nexus card is expiring here in February, so I have to apply for that in the next month or so. Just check them out. Uh, and again, when I did my passport a few months ago, I only took a couple of weeks and talked to another person. Uh, they did theirs, and I think it was about eight days. So, But again, that can change. If all of a sudden there's a high demand, you don't want to find yourself uh, running out of time or, or being rushed to get that done. Yeah, no surprises. No, no surprises. Any surprises. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and remember online pricing, as we mentioned before, like the Brick Friday deals is almost uh, identical to what an agent can find for you. Uh, not only can we assist you before, help with some suggestions, uh, assist you during and necessary after the trip. Because uh, again, a lot of time there's not things that you're really thinking of or may not think of that we can ask you and the computer is not going to do that. They're just going to let you say, hey, book me. Uh, so booking online, you're still essentially dealing with a travel agent, uh, but uh, you have no personalized service or conversations, as I just said. So, you know, you got to look after everything about yourself else. So we appreciate if you have never used a real-life travel agent, try one out. There's lots of really good ones here in Calgary, and you might uh, like how easy the process is and how much more enjoyable your vacation is in the end. So There you go. That. And so what is that phone number if people want to try you out? You can reach us at 403-241-7140. If you're outside Calgary, call us toll-free, 1-877-511-5511. Then you, too, can relax. It's all taken care of. Indeed, sir. Have a great week, everyone. And that is our show for this week. If you have comments or questions, we'd love to hear from you. If you have a show idea, send that along as well. My email is randy at theinformedtraveler.org. And if you like what you heard, tell a friend. You can check out our website too at theinformedtraveler.org. In the meantime, thanks for listening. Travel safe and be an informed traveler. Traveler.